What's up everyone? I hope you're all doing well. So a bit of an interesting one today. This video actually stemmed from me doing a couple of tests here between my Vivo and my Xperia. Me and some other people noticed that the Xperia wasn't holding up quite as well as to what Sony's marketing claims were claiming. And so I really decided to take a look at some of what their marketing said exactly. And I actually found something that I completely missed and I don't think I ever saw anyone mention. And that is the fact that the new XMORT sensors benefits only kick in when you're shooting JPEG. So I'm basing this on the fact that it is in their footnotes on their main page for the Xperia 1 Mark V on the US site. And that is comparing directly to the 1 Mark IV saying that it achieves twice the amount of light gathering as the 1 Mark IV. Sorry, two times better in low light with less noise. So the too long don't want to watch version of this is, I think Sony is one being a little bit deceptive as I will show in some examples in just a little bit the raw files between the 1 Mark IV and 1 Mark V when set up fairly against each other, there's almost no difference in between the two of them, meaning that A, yes, there is reason to believe that the XMORT t doesn't really provide that much of a benefit as compared to the previous model, the 1 Mark IV, and two, that led me to then test the JPEGs against each of them as well, and I actually found that I don't think there's really a huge difference in JPEGs either. We tested all modes of JPEGs with a dynamic range optimizer on and off, with HDR on and off, and then also in basic mode. And to put it quite bluntly, there's honestly not a huge difference between them at all. A lot of the language around the new XMORT t sensor setup being able to give around two times more light gathering ability, that's, you know, according to my tests, completely false. And I'm going to show you the process that I did to test this. So let's jump into that. Okay, so the way that I'm setting this up here is we have our little scene here and we've got our light above here. We're using the app called Motion Cam Pro. And what this does is it gives us a really, really good histogram here. So we can see we have some percentages here. On the right side what we're going to do for both of our phones is we're going to set our iso down here we're going to set it to our base iso so in the one fives case it's going to be uh iso 25 and then what we're going to do is we're just going to change the exposure until our little highlights here on the right side hits uh between like 0.02 to 0.03 percent that way we are just beginning to clip our highlights over there so that's how i'm going to set both of these phones is one more time, I'm just gonna set the ISO to 25 or uh, 64, I think it is on the one four. So the lowest ISO, and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna adjust the shutter speed for both of them until we hit between 0.02% to 0.03%, and that is how I'm gonna decide the shutter speed for both of them. So once again, I have the same scene here this time with the one Mark IV, and you can see uh, ISO on this one might be a little bit dark, actually. There we go. ISO, lowest ISO on this one is 64, and it looks like about 1 over 15 for this one is bringing us here to where we want to be between 0.02 and 0.03% there. And you can see if we turn this on, you've got the little orange over there. That means we are going to be clipping those highlights. So we're just doing this for the sake of setting them uh, both to about the same exposure since uh, they're using different ISO pipelines. You know, every uh, every camera is a little bit different. It's not completely possible to measure 100% apples to apples with these. So this is going to be the fairest comparison here. The whole point of this is just to set up to make sure that they are both getting about the same exposure while being at their base ISO there. Okay, so now that I have both of these set up here under the same conditions, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the light here so we can get it nice and low light-esque and that's how we're going to be comparing these two since uh, the claim that we're going against here is that it does it in low light. All right so this is how the setup looks now. We have this light off and we're going to keep this one here for the rest of our test that way everything can remain the same between the two. You can see on the screen here we're looking uh, pretty underexposed compared to what it was before. So we're going to stick with this. We're going to shoot with RAW first and then we're going to shoot with a couple of different JPEGs and see what happens.
All right, same thing here with our previous settings that we determined in the Motion Cam Pro app with the one mark four this time. Again, we're gonna do a DNG and then we're gonna do a JPEG with all three of the uh, extra options down there. I just want to show that I do, in fact, have them both set to the uh, the same white balance here. But yeah, we can see quite the uh, quite the difference there in rendering between photos still. All right, so jumping into our files here, we're going to start off with uh, it's going to be for all of these photos. The one mark four is going to be on the left, and the one mark five is going to be on the right. Starting off with our first raw here, it's pretty decently lit. I do think uh, there's maybe just a little bit more light coming in for the one mark five in this one let us jump to our next one right here so this is going to be the jpeg with no extra modes enabled again i uh, i think the one four is hinting a slight towards magenta on this one it may be just a tad darker as well so these were set with the same white balance but we're still getting a little bit different here we can still get some uh, differences in the magenta and the greens next up is with dynamic range optimizer so DRO on there's no change between this one next we have JPEG with HDR for both and aside from maybe a little bit better colors on the one five it does look like it is a little bit brighter but I'm not quite seeing a uh, two times improvement and then finally here, we also did basic mode for both of them, since I think that's uh, what their marketing page is mainly aiming towards. And I see a lot of uh, influencers and a lot of marketing posts like on Instagram, the, uh, the people tend to use basic mode. So I wonder if that's what they're leaning towards for this. And again, besides like a slight color difference, I'm honestly going to say these look just about the same to me. And moving on to the most important examples here, we have our rawls from each this is with the uh the lower light settings here so really putting them both to the test and you can see i think the uh the one five does have a little bit extra light i'm not gonna say it's a whole whole lot because it definitely does not look like two times more to me but i will say it does look just a little bit better and in our next little photo here, what I did with each of these rolls is I put them through Lightroom and I raised them by three EVs, so three stops on each, so we can really see what's going on towards the shadows with each of them. And I do think the 1.5 handled the shadows just a little bit better. You can see a lot more of some colors, some wonky, weird colors going on with the 1 Mark IV, but again, I'm not quite sure that I'm gonna say it is two times better here and finally here i have a basic mode shot from both of them in the lower light conditions and minus a few minor color changes i'm honestly not seeing a huge difference even though this is what the marketing page specified is going to benefit from the new xmore t sensor here one really important thing to keep in mind is that the one mark 5 does have a larger sensor but also a slightly slower f-stop. So the One Mark 5 has a 1 over 1.35 inch sensor at f1.9, while the One Mark 4 has a 1 over 1.7 inch sensor at f1.7. So both of those can contribute to differences as well, and just another important point to keep in mind. And then finally, as a last example here, I decided to put my uh, my vivo x100 pro against the both of them again i had matched this one originally to the exact same settings just because i figured i would do an example and again this was taken in the same low light condition and then raised plus three ev in lightroom and this is what two times the amount of light gathering ability should look like you can see there's just so 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 much more light being gathered by the vivos one inch type sensor so needless to say, I'm a little bit beyond disappointed with uh, Sony and their claims on this one. So one other really interesting thing that I wanted to go over here was the max analog sensitivity of each of these devices for the rear cameras here. Basically, what this means is that any ISO over the numbers that we're going to see here is going to be using digital manipulation in order to get a brighter photo, which is not going to be as good as if you stayed under this number here, I'm going to link another video in the description below 
going over some of the more nerdy stuff about this. They could do a way better job explaining it than me. So if you're interested in knowing why this is important, do be sure to check that out in the description below. That video will be by the Adorama channel, so do be sure to go check that out. It is definitely a good listen to get a little more learned up on that. So jumping right in here, the uh, camera two right here, this is going to be the main sensor on the Xperia 1 Mark IV that we can see here. So 388 is going to be the max for uh, the 24 millimeter there. Up next, we have our telephoto. ISO 256, that is the max analog sensitivity for the telephoto on the One Mark IV. And then finally here we have our ultra wide, which is looking at 512 for that one there. Next up we've got the Xperia One Mark V here, and this one's going to be a little bit different. You can see the main camera here, this one is the 24 millimeter. We're looking at ISO 400 for this one. Up next, our telephoto is going to be 256. And then our ultra wide is also going to be ISO 400 for this one. So matching the main sensor. And then finally here, I added the Vivo X100 Pro just as kind of like as a control here. Looking at our main sensor first, you can see a whopping 6400 on that one. That really goes to show the difference in sensors there. Next, our telephoto is going to be 527. So nothing super special on that one. Also pretty low. And then our ultra wide as well. Look at that 3200 on that one so just a nice fun little comparison there and like i said be sure to check out the video that i link below and look a little bit more into this and why this is really useful information to know so in conclusion one i am disappointed in sony but two i think i am even more disappointed in myself because first of all i completely missed this on my own part so in terms of wanting to buy the device i bought this device primarily for its camera and the marketing that it had significant low light ability compared to the predecessor. I'm also disappointed that I don't remember this being mentioned at all in any reviews whatsoever. I didn't see it in the marketing, although you can see on their website it is there. It's there, but you know, it's got the little tiny footnote, and then you also have to kind of expand the footnotes on the web page to read them as well. So I'm gonna say that's a little bit deceptive on Sony's part. That's not cool. But yes, I think I'm most of all disappointed in myself for not doing this due diligence beforehand. I don't think even in my own review that I quite noticed that this was going on. So one, I apologize for not including that in my review. Need to do a little bit better in terms of that. But yes, I'm honestly disappointed. And what this means in my opinion going forward is that uh, I've seen rumors that all three of the rear cameras on the next Xperia are gonna have these XMORT sensors I want to warn you, be very, very, very skeptical about how these are going to perform in comparison to physically larger sensors. You can do all the marketing in the world, you can get the best influencers in the world, even the best photographers in the world to do your marketing campaign for you, but at the end of the day, just be very careful and make sure that you don't go in trusting what the marketing material says. So yes, I think just a word of caution, whenever the next Xperia comes out, be very skeptical. Make sure to dig into the details and see if there's another footnote like this one, where one, it only applies to JPEGs, which is pretty lame. Um, I think my biggest complaint here is that Sony markets itself as a photographer's phone, and then it's going to provide all this new sensor tech, but it's only going to be available in JPEG mode. That seems, what's the word, hypocritical, a little bit hypocritical, in my opinion. So uh, I think... I think the conclusion for me of this video overall is I think I'm done with Sony in terms of uh, their mobile phones for now, or at least for a while. I don't think I'm going to be reviewing the One Mark Six unless I get sent a review version, but after this video I have a feeling Sony's not going to be too, uh, too kind to send me one of those. So yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and let me know what you think down in the comments. Is this worth being upset about? Are you upset about it? Did you see the footnote? All those kind of things. Drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think. And I will see you guys in the next video.